So how much energy was actually required to do that? Don't we need the specific heat of aluminum? Yes, we do. So the specific heat of aluminum is 0.215 calories per gram degrees Celsius. We don't, do you know mass of the aluminum? We don't, so we'll have to figure that out too. I need to give a little bit more information, obviously. Um, so why don't we just start out with, I'll give the mass of it, and then we'll work backwards from there. Uh, so the mass of aluminum, let's just say three kilograms. And then we'll figure out how, how big the bar needed to be. It's like 10 meters long, but it didn't get the other dimensions. Would we work in grams? Or would we work in kilograms? Uh, we're going to have to convert. Times 119,000? Yeah. Because it's not a gram. Because it's not a gram. You're going 0.003? Into grams. To get it into. Oh. I guess it's the where you're going. To get this into grams, remember a kilo means a thousand, so that's 3,000 grams. Yeah. And so this will be 3,000 times our specific heat. Uh, let's put units in at this point. So that's 3,000 grams. grams. 0.215 calories per gram degrees Celsius times our change temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. Is this 32,250 Fahrenheit? It should be somewhere, somewhere above 32,000? 30, 32,000. 32,250. That's what I got as well. Joules? Not yet. No. Think about what I have here. Do I have joules in my equations? It's in calories. It's in calories. Way out of order here. Did not space that out well. You forget how many joules that is. Well, we convert. So it's 4.184 joules per calorie. Make sure I'm going the right way on that one. Yep. One hundred thirty-four thousand nine hundred thirty-four joules. Oh, let's take it one step further. Because why not? One second, Mister. Yes, ma'am. So when you said you divided the. The joule by the cow. What's the cow? Is that the 32,250? Yeah, 32,250. Oh, so you're dividing that by the four. four and then I'm multiplying times 4.184. Because okay. every calorie is that number of joules. Oh, for real. So what's the division sign? Why is it divided? That's calorie? joules per calorie. Oh. That's just. You got confused. Typically when you do unit conversions, you set it up like that, or typically I should say, when I do unit conversions, I set it up like that. Oh, right. uh, if you prefer, I can do 32,250 calories is to X as um, one calorie is to 4.184 joules. I can set it up that way and do cross multiplication. And you're still doing that times that. Oh, okay. I don't know which one you prefer. No, I prefer just however you, how, how did you do right there? I just didn't understand um, the multiplying of the um, 32. 
Yeah. Because the numerator and denominator, because this is equal to that, because they're equal to each other, mm -hmm. this fraction here is equal to one, mm -hmm. because the numerator, numerator and denominator are equal. So I'm taking this and I'm multiplying by one, which is, when you do unit conversions, that's all you're doing is you multiply by one. And you also set it up so that I, whatever unit I'm trying to get rid of, if it's on top, I need it on the bottom at some point so that they cancel out. That sounds pretty good to me. So like a current length statement, instead of Congress of this length of the... I could have done 4.184 joules per... Yeah, that's, per that's how it's... I typically, when I'm doing the unit conversion, I do it this way, just so it's, I can see, oh, I got cal on top and bottom, they're gonna go away. I, it's easier for me to visualize. So, and therefore, easier for everybody. Is the 134,000 number, that indicates the heat of the aluminum? That is the amount of heat that got transferred into the aluminum. In joules. In joules. So the that would be the is the thirty two thousand number the heat lost and gained? That is the amount of energy or the heat in calories. Okay. It's just it's the same thing except different units. So, how much energy needed to get pumped into the aluminum foil in order to increase the temperature of 50 degrees Celsius? Well, there's one answer, there's the other answer. Either one, both are correct. Okay. If you get this far and I didn't specify the units and you just keep going, that's because you just enjoy the math. Okay. And clearly, some of you do enjoy the math. Because on the test, typically when I ask for the weight of something, there's, there's a certain group of people who always, they will, instead of doing it, putting their answer in Newtons, they'll do more math to get it into pounds, which is fine. Newtons is perfectly acceptable, of course. All right, let's take it one step further. I got the ground here where I'm gonna make H is equal to zero. The question is how high up does this thing, does this aluminum need to be in order to have that much potential energy? Because we're talking about gravitational potential energy because there's no other conservative forces involved here. What is the formula? I didn't think it was that long ago. Formula for gravitational potential energy. Alright, so we have it. Formula for potential energy. Is it MG eight? Yes, it is. I'm hoping that sounds familiar to, to all of you. 
It is, but I just kept thinking um, on how Kennedy Square. Oh, the kinetic. Yeah. All right, so I'm trying to figure out how high up does it need to be. And so, well, I'm setting that equal to my mass, which is three kilograms, times G, which is going with Earth, 9.8 meters per second squared, times H. So my H is going to be 134, 934 divided by uh, uh, 3 times 9.8 is 29.4. Pardon? The question I asked was, this is the amount of energy that required was required to make the aluminum foil or make the aluminum change temperature by 50 degrees Celsius. Yeah. So the question I asked is, if the ground is H is equal to zero, how high up does the aluminum need to be for that amount of energy to be potential, potential energy? In other words, I want to find the height for that to be equal to potential, potential energy. Four five eight nine point five nine. Yes. yes. Units. Um, Somebody just said it. Meters. Yeah. All right. So, so where'd you get number three from? Where'd you get three kil um, three kilograms kilograms from? Uh, I I just I said earlier that that was the mass. So. Oh, all right. I knew that. I was just trying. All right. Thank you. That's why it was successful. This one you didn't need to change the kilogram to gram. Right, because the the gram bit had canceled out. We'd we'd lost grams by then. Okay. All right. So what does this mean physically? All right. So it's a little over four and a half kilometers up. So if I took this ten meter long aluminum bar, little over four and a half kilometers up, of course in a vacuum because I don't want air resistance to mess it up. And then I drop it. If somehow I had a surface down here that when it hits it, all the energy actually goes into the aluminum foil and not into the ground itself. Since I'm doing make-believe anyway, why not? So I take this aluminum bar, I drop it, it falls the four and a half kilometers, smacks into the ground, all the energy goes into the aluminum foil and the aluminum foil will expand 1.2 centimeters. And of course, there's some assumptions built into that. Again, no air resistance, and all the energy goes into, because that, all that potential energy goes into kinetic energy, and then that kinetic energy has to go somewhere when it hits, because the aluminum foil, I'm assuming it's not bouncing. Aluminum foil hits, and so in, in this fantasy problem, all that kinetic energy gets transferred into kinetic energy in the atoms of the aluminum bar, which causes an expansion. Does it depend on what, what this Drop it, it drop it on? Yeah, it has to drop on some magical thing that will not absorb any of the energy. Does that also mean that when it hits the ground, it heats up 50 degrees? Uh, in my scenario, yes, it would heat up 50 degrees. In reality, it's going to hit the ground. Assuming it doesn't bounce, the, 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 aluminum, the aluminum bar will take some of it, the ground will take some of it, and both will heat up. I mean, you can sort of experience some of that. If you smack your hands together, your hands do warm up because you have all that energy that suddenly goes into something. It goes part of it into the sound, but it, some of it goes into your hands also. Well, how did you know it was going to be meters for finding the height? Oh. If I start in standard international standard units, I'm going to end in international standard units. 
And so joules, standard, meters, seconds, kilograms are all standard. So therefore, I'm going to end up in standard. However, let's say that your mind's not working that way at that moment, or you don't have faith in the system. Basically, from a unit point of view, I did joules divided by a kilogram meter per second squared. That's kilogram meter per second squared, otherwise known as Yes. So that is a my numerator, or sorry, denominator is just a newton. A joule, remember that's force times some displacement. A joule is a newton meter. So what I'm left with is just meters. If I talk about my favorite, one of my favorite problems of all time, dealing with units, I did it for a 252 test. Oh, such an awesome problem. I, there was one major flaw that I had in it, but I gave, it was multiple choice, there were 15 choices, and the question was, which are units of time? So for example, uh, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. Therefore, a second is a square root of a kilogram meter per newton. That would be a unit of time, because it's just a second. So this was the question I had. The, the final flaw was the amount of time it takes for someone walking into it to look at that and try to figure it out. One problem took potentially 45 minutes. That was a mistake. How many problems did you have? Four. No, more than that. That was back when I, when at five hours, I said, I'm done. You know, just hand it your five hours of playing. Grade the ones you did? Say it again? Did you just grade the ones that they could do? No, no. I mean, by five hours, there's usually just one student in there at that point. But I'm tired. I mean, it was an evening class, and it's getting on. Sorry. The, the shocking thing was that one of the choices for the multiple choice for which was the unit of time was the letter S, and the shocking the number of students who missed it. But it's possible that their brain fried at some point. Still a great problem. Just not for a test. Well, now we know the answer is S, so you can get those, is that your credit? Yeah. I have not subjected 110 to a question like that, but potentially an extra credit I might do something like that. We'll see what happens. All right, so the aluminum, I said three kilograms. So I have three kilograms of aluminum and I know it's 10 meters long. Let's just assume that it is basically a really long cylinder. What I want to know is what's the diameter? So if I had a 10 meter long, three, kil 10 meter, three kilogram long aluminum bar, this is just more fun with stuff that we've done already. Density. Bring density back. What is the formula for density? The mass over volume. I know what the mass is. I just need to find the volume. Density is something I would look up. And well, let's deal with SI units. It's 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. And that's equal to my mass just three kilograms per volume. So what is the volume of my aluminum?
Say it again. Oh. No, we're not one point. If, if, if 2,700 kilograms is for one cubic meter, then three kilograms has to be for less than one cubic meter. When you're doing cross multiplication, you got two fractions equal to each other. You multiply the diagonal you know, that's that one, and then divide by what's left over. So it is 900? 1 over 900. Oh. 3 times 1, so multiply the diagonal you know, and divide by 2,700. Oh. So it's 3 over 2,700, or 1 over 900, or 0. 0.0. 001 cubic meters. Where are the rules set? So, so that goes around the cube. Roughly one tenth of my volume. Oh. And that's a nine there. Is that point zero zero one 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 T? Uh, no, that's the bar represent that the one repeats forever. Oh. Yeah, I can understand why that looks like a T. So, All right. you guys got that that we did 1 divided by 900? Yep. So, well, you did. All right. All right, so now know the volume of it. I know the length of it is 10 cubic meters. So when I've got a really long thing, and, I, and granted this is potentially outside the comfort zone for a number of you, but we've come this far. If I just know what the area of this, of the cross, what's known as the cross-sectional area, so if I do that area times my length here, that will get me my volume. So I'm just gonna call that A. I know that's 10 meters long, so 10 meters times whatever my area is of the end is going to be equal to 0 0.001 repeating. So my area, I'm just dividing that by 10, so tack on an extra zero, 